Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on the Standard Normal Table. At Walter State, we are using a Standard Z Table that gives the area to the left. If you're using a different type of table, you will not get any help by watching this video. And before beginning this video, you will need to have access to a standard normal table that gives the area to the left. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this multiple part video series for students. We will cover the following topics in this set of videos. An introduction to the standard normal table, the Z table. Given a Z value, find the requested probability. And given a probability, find the Z value. Topic number one, introduction to the Z table, the standard normal table. The study of the standard normal distribution will be important to the end of our course here at Walter State. If you are not in our course, the normal distribution is still an important part to any statistics course. Mrs. Borlaug has given us some characteristics of the standard normal distribution. The curve is bell-shaped. This means that there is more area toward the center and less towards the left and right ends, which we will call tails. The mean of the standard normal distribution is zero and its standard deviation is one. Let me say that again. The mean and standard deviation are known in a standard normal distribution. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. The area under the curve is the same as the probability and the total area or the total probability is equal to one. Remember, even though the graph on my screen doesn't actually show it, the bell-shaped curves theoretically go forever to the right and to the left, to infinity and beyond, as the statement can say. There are a couple of things that we do when reading and using our tables only because the way our table is set up. If you're using a different type of table, these things will be different. This PowerPoint uses a table well where all of our Z values are rounded to two decimal places. So when using values from this standard normal table, we will always round our Z scores to two decimal places. The number of decimal places must match our table. The table we use for the standard normal distribution gives the, us the area to the left of the Z value we look up. And to use the table, round the Z values to two decimal places. I think I read those in reverse order. Oh well. Other types of tables do exist in statistics and I have seen them in various texts, but the table that this PowerPoint is based on is one with the area given to the left of the table. We are now ready for example one to find the area to the left of Z equals 1.28. To find the Z value, we want to use the edges of the table. And the edges of the table give us, along the left edge, the ones and the tens place, tenths place, while the top edge contains the hundredth 
place value. Remember, as we start at the digit before the decimal, that is the ones place, the tenths place, and then the hundredths place. So to look up 1.28, we want to find 1.2 along the left hand side to indicate which row, and the point 0 8 along the top to indicate which column. The 0 here is because we already have the tenths indicated by the row, and you can see how those two numbers add to give you the 1.28. So we now have the 1.2, the 0 0.08, they together make our number, and we want to find the area to the left of the Z value inside the main body of the table. When we go over and down to where the column and row meet, we will find a four digit decimal. This is the area to the left of that number. And that would be in your table 0 0.8 997. Instead of just looking at the table, we can draw a picture that will help illustrate what's happening with your table value. And a picture is worth a thousand words and will help us in later problems. Draw your bell shaped curve, draw 1.28 to the right of your zero, which means it is positive. Then since we want to shade and find the area to the left, we'll highlight that area to the left. We can either shade it or as Ms. Borlaug, she has outlined that area. Since the table gives us that area, that gives us 0 0.8997 and that is the area to the left. It is time for a second example. Find the area to the left of z equals negative 0 0.92. We want to look up, notice this case, the ones place is 0, the tenths place is 9, and it is negative. So we want to be sure that we remember to look up negative 0 0.9 in the left column, point zero two in the top column, go across and down to where they cross, that will give us 0 0.1788 and that is the area to the left. If we were to draw that, we would draw our curve, place negative 0.92 to the left of 0 because numbers to the left of 0 would be negative, so we would place negative 0.92 to the left. Scale does not matter here. We're not trying to be super accurate. These are just rough sketches. They do not have to be drawn to scale. Since we're looking for the area to the left and the table gives us the area to the left, the area to the left would be 0 0.1788. Here are two student activities for you to try, two questions for you to try, and this does appear to be a good place to stop, and we will pick up just where we left off in the second video. Thank you for watching.